This is the Ford Expedition Timberline and it was introduced for the 2022 model year. There are a few things that make the Timberline a little bit more unique. Like outside of the basic, we've got the Timberline badging. Look at the Expedition badging. It's got this like nice highlight where we've got this like nice tangerine color underneath the actual Expedition badging. Now, the Timberline itself is fairly loaded. There are two different packages that are available. You've got the mid package, so the 500A versus the 501A high package. High package gives us a few extra things. We've got a 360 camera. So we've got the front facing camera, front sensing system, and a number of other pretty cool features. Now, this is just gonna be a quick look at the Timberline trim level of the vehicle. If you want a fuller look at a walk around of the Expedition in general, or if on the inside you want to know how to use the Sync 4 media screen to set up Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, using massage chair seats, check down in the description below for that walkthrough instead. But let's unpack this thing because it looks pretty dang nice. Now it's funny, I was actually looking at it from a little bit of an angle here, but like this part of the body almost kind of looks like the Ranger, like a tiny little bit. Until you get to the body styling of the vehicle and you realize just how much of a beast this thing is. So Expedition in the Timberline version of the vehicle, strictly going to be available in the regular wheel length, so the wheelbase. We've got the option for some of the other trim levels, getting it either in the regular or the max version. It's just not available in the Timberline whatsoever, but I mean, this thing is nice. Starting off with some outside features, we've got these beefy tires. Look at these Goodyear Wrangler tires. Absolutely stunning off-road and this is really where the Timberline shines. It's more for that off-road type of performance. We've got our off-road shocks and things like that so I'm actually going to let you take a peek underneath the vehicle because this thing is kind of crazy. All right so taking a look there, take a look at the suspension as we go. So front and back is going to be slightly different. We've got some enhanced active noise control on the inside, but we've got premium off-road shocks and we've got our rough road suspension all at the same time. And again, that's just because this is the Timberline version of the vehicle. It's meant a little bit more for off-road purposes. So if you are looking for an off-road vehicle, you know, seven, eight seater, Expedition Timberline might, well, should be on your radar, but some other nice highlights. We've got these nice looking headlamps there down below into our fogs. We do have two front tow hooks that are painted uh, tangerine, I guess is what we're calling it. So tangerine orange with that nice highlight right through at the front there. Plastics there, but we do have our steel black bash plate right underneath. So again, taking it off road, you are going to be protected there. But this thing looks nice. Look at the top there. We've got our shark fin antenna along the side. We've got our We've got our roof rails. We've got the options for crossbars and things like that, just in case we need roof rack carriers, etc. Now, because this is the 501A version of the Expedition, we do have, so, our side view mounted cameras. We've got our front mounted camera that I showed you, our backup camera. So this thing has a full 360 camera. We've got our base running boards there on top of that. So we can see our, just our base, regular plastic running board there. I do, I love the wheel. Inside of this is nice, nice looking rim. We've got our blacked out Ford badge there instead of the traditional blue logo of the blue oval that we're gonna find inside of a lot of other Ford vehicles. But I mean, the suspension, look at this. Beefy, it's mean. Not as mean as what's going on underneath the hood because the Expedition does technically only have one available engine choice, but it has a few different specs that are available just depending on which trim level of the vehicle that you're in. So this is the Timberline, Ooh, off to the side there, and up we go. So we've got this 3.5 liter EcoBoost, so it's a turbocharged engine that we're going to find in some other Ford and Lincoln vehicles. Now this one is a little bit special, and the reason why is because what's going on underneath the hood, it's tuned slightly differently than what we're gonna find in the rest of the Expedition lineup. So this one you're also gonna find inside of the Limited, so the Stealth Edition Performance Package, but it's the 3.5 liter high output. So it's got 440 horsepower and an impressive 510 pound-feet of torque. So again, even more power than we're gonna find inside of the base trim levels of the vehicle. Easy access if we need to top up fluids there. Checking oil, 
little bit more challenging. We've got our dipstick to the far side there. But I mean, nice setup overall underneath the hood. But performance wise, like I said, 440, 510 pound feet of torque. This is the engine you want to look at if you want better performance out of the Expedition. It still is really nice regardless. You'll just get that little bit more in the Timberline version of the vehicle than you will in the majority of other trims. I do like that we are on hydraulics there. We've got our heat shield right along the very top as well. But I do, I love that black Ford badge. Hold on. I love that Ford badge in the front there. Like having the black oval instead of the traditional blue, it just makes it look that little bit different. But this vehicle is big. It's beastly. Let's have a peek inside. So some technology on the outside before we jump in. We've got our five digit number there so we can push the bottom two if we want to lock the door. We enter in our five digit factory number and we also have the option of programming in our own. We've got intelligent access so we can press there to lock. Slide here to unlock as well. Underneath, I already pointed out, we do have our camera there. Blind spot system lets us know if anybody's entered the blind spot on either side of the vehicle. Now, that orange kind of tangerine look that you can see there, it follows throughout part of the dash. So we've got that orange tangerine stitching all the way throughout, follows all the way throughout the seat on top of that driver passenger side. And then because this is the Timberline version of the vehicle, one thing you might be able to see, I'm hoping, but we've got this nice like green type of look for the inside here. So all along the seat, it's, it's nice. It's really nice. I kind of hope that this shows up nicely inside of pictures and videos and things like that but it's nice. It looks really sharp compared to your traditional black that you're gonna find inside of the vehicle. But let's look at some highlights. So again, that tangerine stitching follows all the way throughout, even around the steering wheel, wraps down. We've got this nice metallic highlight throughout the door and basics. So we've got three individual seat memory buttons. One cool thing with the seat memory buttons is that we can also have it remember our side view mirrors, our steering wheel and our seat. So we just adjust however we'd like to, steering wheel, etc. We press and hold either one, two, or three for it to remember our own personal preferences. Adjust our side view mirrors. We do have power folding side view mirrors, basic window controls. We've got our handle there and a nice amount of storage space. Now we do have an upgraded Bang & Olufsen sound system inside of this one, which we are going to get because we're in the 501A version of the Timberline. It also gives us some, a few other nice things like a nicer, beefier media screen on top of that. But some other highlights on the outside here, just a little POV. So we do have a nice little map along the side. We can also power fold our headrest for the third row. We can open our trunk, open, close. We can turn on our zone lighting that's on the outside of the vehicle on our side view mirrors. So we can turn the lights on that would shine right down there. Useful for, uh, for later on at night. We've got a control for our fog lamps, figure out what's going on with our running lamps, increase or decrease the brightness of the cluster screen, electronic parking brake. We've got power adjustable pedals on top of that. Now this, it is just a sticker, but it would be kind of nice if we had some more orange highlights throughout. I just think like the small highlight, it looks really, really sharp. I did mention, so we do have a power telescoping steering wheel that does tie in with our side view mirror memory on top of that. Now looking at the seat, because we're in the Timberline version of the vehicle, power seat so we can go forwards backwards with it up and down we can adjust our backrest and we also have two-way lumbar support other thing to point out headrest is just going to be a two-way adjust so we can just go up and down we can't click it forward unfortunately but having a peek on the inside so that black look that we have for the ford badge carries through the steering wheel and this thing fairly technologically loaded like when I say loaded, it's got a lot of stuff. There are quite a few different options that are available for this thing on top of that. So I mentioned that we do either have the 500A or the 501A. With the 501A giving us a lot of other features, mostly some interior stuff. Like I mentioned, we've got that 360 camera. We've got this beefier Sync 4 media screen on top of that. But we do have our adaptive cruise control system. We can adjust the audio. We've got a voice command prompt. And then we also do have our base button so we can change between songs, radio stations, we can answer or hang up on a phone call, and we can also navigate through the cluster screen very simply. Oh, look at that digital screen. Oh, so nice. So a few things there. You can see beautiful cluster screen, fully digital, which looks fantastic. We do have a series of selectable drive modes down here. So as we navigate through, we've got our normal mode, we've got our slippery sand mud ruts, 
Other way, we've got tow hall, sport mode, eco, and then back to normal again. So I do, I love the base animations there, but all of the different drive modes do something different. So if you want better performance off-road, we've got those different modes available. If you want to unlock the truest performance, the sport mode, it's definitely where you want to be. It revs up the RPMs a little bit higher, gives us a much more aggressive feel. But the screen itself looks fantastic. We do have the flexibility of customizing some things throughout, but if you want to walk through on how to use all of these different buttons, check in the description of the video. So down below, we've got our base controls there for our windows. So for our front and then for our rear window, you can see there, we've got our rear wiper going very simply. Now I did mention, so we are push button start inside of this. We've got our pro trailer backup assist. So rather than counter steering the steering wheel, we just twist this the way that we want the vehicle to go or the trailer to go. And it's automatically gonna counter steer the wheel for us. We've got our integrated brake controller and this. So the optional sync for media screen, there are two different varieties. This one is gonna be standard in the platinum version of the vehicle. And then obviously optional in the Timberline, but it is crazy. We've got so many different options that are available. We've got some cool options for towing and for 360 cameras and things like that. So I did mention it. We've got our full 360 camera, so full 360 view. We've got our backup view. We've got our front view, our front 180 degree view. And then we've also got our hitch view. So if we're backing up in order to hook up a trailer, we can easily back up that way, flipping back to our 360 view instead. So some really cool options that are available here. We've got camera I mentioned. We've got some options for towing. So this thing can help us out with adding through adding a trailer. We've got zone lighting. Trail turn assist is pretty dang cool. And that's gonna be unique to the Timberline version of the vehicle. But what trail turn assist does is if you're gonna be taking this thing off road, if you have to make a hard right, hard left, whatever the case may be, trail turn assist is gonna lock up the innermost rear tire. And the reason why it locks it up so you can, not like Tokyo Drift, but you can like spin easier in order to get around obstacles and things like that. It's a really, really useful feature. But there are some killer settings that are available inside of this thing. Different options for radio, driver assistant settings. So a lot of good safety settings like a lane keeping system. We've got blind spot system, reverse brake assist. So the reverse brake assist is cool because as we back up, if there's an obstacle behind us that we don't see, the car is automatically gonna slam on the brakes for us, which is fantastic. But overall, good features, good set of technology inside of this thing. We've got AM, FM, Sirius XM. We do have a voice command prompt. 94.9 FM. Tuning to FM 94.9. So we can change the radio station using our voice and then just a quick audio test. So first of all, amazing sound. Green Day is a phenomenal band, but through this upgraded Bang & Olufsen sound system, that song sounds even better. So I love it, deep bass. We can easily adjust our treble mid-range bass and things like that right through the screen. But I love the way the audio sounds inside of this vehicle. It's just fully immersive, which is fantastic. But there are so many other cool highlights throughout the screen. Like we do have factory navigation, which is great. We could use the screen in order to connect to either Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. So we can use Google Maps, Apple Maps, Waze, things like that. Some other pretty cool features that are available. So as you can see there, we do have our little rotary shifter in order to be able to look at volume and change out volume and things like that. We've got a nice animation as we turn this thing on or off all at the same time. Our climate control settings are built right into the screen. We've got dual zone climate control at a minimum here. We've also got a heated steering wheel, heated and ventilated first row seats, which is fantastic. And then I did mention we've got our volume rocker on top of that. Moving down, we do have this little button. So for full wave blinkers, toggle our traction control system on off, and then our max windshield defroster. Off to the side, we've got a 12 volt power point here. And then we also do have a little tray. Nice little storage area. But again, that same like nice orange like highlight follows all the way throughout. So we've got our nice stitching, nice highlight down below on top of that. From there, we also do have our glove box, an assist handle for the driver passenger side, which is fantastic. But moving down, so we do have this little slideable tray. We've got our wireless charge pad and two USB ports. So USB as well as our USB-C and a little bit of storage on the inside there. And for this, we're just gonna who? push in order to close. Moving down from there, we do have a few cup holders, but this is actually hidden. So we can push in order to show which is fantastic or just hide away. 
We've got a rotary dial shifter, so park reverse neutral drive, and then we can also flip it out to go into a manual mode. So one of the benefits of being in that manual mode is that we can then adjust out gears on the fly if we want to. We can also lock out our rear differential if we want to do that. Down from there, series of different drive modes, so two high, four auto, four high, four low. What mode you're in is going to depend on what you're doing with the vehicle. So just regular day-to-day -day driving, you could be in two high for the majority of it. That's going to be the best possible fuel mileage you can get out of it. Four high if you're going to be going through snow. Four auto to let the vehicle determine what you should be doing. Versus four low if you're doing aggressive rock crawling, if you're pulling a boat out of water, things like that. Moving down from there, we also do have our trail control. And then we've got our park sensing system that we can turn off if we want to. From there, we also do have our armrest that has a boatload of storage space. We've got another 12 volt power point on the inside. And as you saw there, fully removable tray. There are some cup holders there. And as we start to move up, we've got our auto dimming rear view mirror. We do have a series of other options that are available. So some interior cabin control lights. We've got our shade on top of that. So moving the shade, you can see there just opens things up. So so nicely and then we've got some controls so we could if we want to just vent it out or we can open this thing up and up you go so really nice look i'm personally a pretty big fan of sunroofs big reason why it just opens things up so nicely brings in a nice amount of sun i mean you can kind of see it going there so nice so nice but Single button press, like I said, opens it up halfway. Secondary button press will open it up the rest of the way. We can kind of pause, stop it partway through if we wanted to, which is definitely a nice thing. From there, we do have our sunglasses holder. We've got our home link system, so we can program in a garage door opener if we have one at home. We've got our visor vanity mirror with built-in lights, little business card receipt holder, and then this thing extending out to block all the sun. That might be hitting our eyes. Definitely a nice thing, but like I said, feature-wise, this thing is fairly loaded. There are some pretty good options that are inside of it, but I like the little highlights. Like the steering wheel having that tangerine stitching fall throughout is nice. We've got this nice like metallic texture along the bottom part of the steering wheel on top of that, which is pretty nice. All right, let's have a peek at what's going on in the back. All right, towards the second row of the vehicle, hopping inside, we do have that same tangerine stitching that follows throughout the door, the seats, etc. We've got, well, technically two different configurations for the Timberline. So it's either a seven or an eight seat configuration, just depending on what's going on with this middle seat. So this one is going to be obviously the bench seat. We could have an easier pass through the back just by not getting the bench seat option, but we'll get to that in a second. Now, similar highlights that we have along the door here, that nice metallic highlight. We've got our little badge there as well. A little handle there, or I should say handle there. A little storage, a little storage there on top of that. Now looking at the seat, we could easily fold down. We've got our tether points there. And if you've got child, so if you've got child seats, we've got our anchors on the bottom of the seats for the third row. But we also have our anchors on the second row seats on top of that. So spacing wise, I'm six feet tall, driver's seat set up for somebody six feet tall. But I mean, in the second row, I still have a good amount of knee space, good amount of foot space, and up overhead, eh, what are we looking at there? Like two, maybe two and a half inches roughly of head space. So not a ton of space back here, but one of the cool things, that lever that we just pulled in order to fold the seat down, we can also extend it back if we want to. Definitely nice, but I mean, that opens things up obviously like even more. So if you've got taller people, they'll probably be able to comfortably fit inside of the second row of the Expedition. You may just have to recline the seats a tiny little bit in order to make the seat a little bit more comfortable. We do have a little bar between our legs there and that's for all three seats, you can see there. And that's going to let us move the seat forwards and backwards very simply on top of that. So other things to point out, because we have the jump seat in the middle here, we don't have any sort of cup holders in the seat whatsoever. That's just not available there as an option. But moving behind the first row, so we've got some handles there, or some handles, we've got pockets there along the first row. I mentioned we do have our cup holders there just on the armrest. Moving down, we've got some more power points. So we've got two USB power points, so USB, USB-C. We've got a wall outlet. Moving down a little bit more, we also do have a 12 volt jack and then a little storage space there. 
You did also see, so we do have some basic vent controls back here, so we can adjust what's going on with our fan speed. We can control the temperature back here. We can have it going to our face or our feet. And we also do have second row heated seats for the outboard seats. So outboard meaning this seat and the seat that I'm sitting in. This middle seat, it's never gonna be heated whatsoever. So unfortunately not available there as an option. But it did mention, so no cup holders there on the base seat. We do have the flexibility of easily folding that seat down if we want to. And again, no cup holders there. So if you needed second row cup holders, unfortunately with the bench seat, you're not getting that as an option whatsoever. I do kind of wish that it is available there, but it's not. And as we move up, we do have our base control so we can adjust what's going on with our vent along the top. We've got our clothing hook. We've got a little light there as well as a little assist handle. And that's the same for the driver as well as the passenger side of the vehicle. But like I said, overall space styling wise, this is pretty nice. Now, getting into the third row of the vehicle is also pretty straightforward. Like I mentioned there, we can fold the seat down that way. If we had the one with the bench set up in, or sorry, with the dual captain's chairs instead of the bench, we could easily pass through that way. But we also do have this handle along the top so we can pull that in order to slide the seat forward to get inside. So, I mean, it's easy enough ooh, in order to be able to do that. So like I said, super simple. Now, the one thing, the seats I did mention can be moved forward. Now I'm six feet tall, so the seats in the second row can be moved forward. So it is a little tight. With the seats, they're not as far back as they can go, but I mean, a little bit more and like I wouldn't be able to fit in the third row whatsoever. So that's pretty tight. So if we move over here, this seat can move forward backwards a little bit more, but like I've got next to no space. So if you've got some taller people, third row should probably go to the people that are a little bit shorter. Or I did mention you've got all of your anchors and tethers back here. So you could also just set somebody up like a child seat or whatever the case may be. But one of the cool things about the third row is that we do have seats that can also recline. So it's not a big recline, but we do have that flexibility if we want to. So with the seat fully reclined, my head is actually touching the back right now. So with it upright, I've got, ooh, that's tight, like an inch, inch and a half roughly of head space there. So taller people, could you fit back here? Yes, if I drew the short straw, I wouldn't mind sitting back here. The second row seats are definitely more comfortable than the third row. This cushion is still pretty nice back here though, all at the same time. But I did mention, so we've got our power folding, our power seats in the back. We do also have some cup holders back here, and we've also got a USB power point on both sides. So for the driver passenger up overhead, we do also have some hooks there too. We've got our little vent control. We can also control our lights through the back on top of that. So a few basic things, nothing too crazy. I did mention we do have all of our tether points on top of that. So front facing, rear facing child seats, you're not gonna have an issue inside of this thing whatsoever. But which way you go is going to be your choice. If you need like a five seater with a boatload of space because you've got kids that are in sports like hockey, whatever the case may be, the Expedition would be a good option or even the Explorer. So it's going to depend on how many seats you need. So six or seven in the Explorer, seven or eight inside of the Expedition, just depending on which version of the vehicle you've gone for. But I mean, folding these seats one way or the other is really, really straightforward. We've got a nice look on the inside of this car. It's really, really sharp. I like what they've done with the Timberline, especially with these like green seats. I just think it looks fantastic. All right, now a few other small highlights. I did mention we've got our Timberline badge there. We do have non-locking gas cover there and we don't have any sort of gas cap. So it's a capless system. Just insert, fill up and you're good to go. All you need to use inside of the Expedition, just minimum manufacturer's recommendation, is 87 gas. So regular fuel is all you technically need to use inside of this thing. A little bit of a caveat though, is the horsepower and torque specs that we were looking at underneath the hood are achieved using a premium fuel. So do you need to use a premium fuel? No, but if you want the best possible performance out of this thing, you ideally want to use like a 91 octane. That would give you probably the best performance you're going to get especially out of the high output engine that we're looking at inside of the Timberline or the limited stealth performance package. So something to think about. Now, towards the back end of the vehicle, we do have these nice lamps. Again, another Timberline badge, but I love the little Expedition badge in the back here, how it's got like these 
So if we look, it's got like a drop shadow almost of tangerine in the back. We've got a nice look along the front there. Our black Ford badge there. We do also have our separated glass. So if we wanted to, we've got the flexibility. So just under the eye of popping up just the glass by itself if we want to. Nice rear wiper. And then underneath, really, really nice. But we'll get to the back in a second because I also wanted to point out in the back here. So we've got our reverse sensing system and very similar to that metallic look we saw in the front end, we do have it back here. This also is going to be for our hitch. So it's actually hidden just underneath this. We would just pull under here in order to be able to show that hitch if we wanted to. Towing inside of the Expedition is going to kind of be all over the place. You're up to 9,300 pounds though. So it's going to depend on which version of the vehicle you're in. Are you in four by two versus four by four? Are you in the max version of the vehicle? So there are tons of different things you have to look at. I'm just gonna have the full Expedition towing numbers show up, but just go in knowing you've got a ton of different options that are available, which is always a nice thing. All right, so series of different buttons that are available on the outside, and these are actually just the regular mats. So we've got our regular cloth mats, and we've also got our thermoplastic rubber tray on top of that. So which one you go for is going to be a matter of personal preference there. But popping inside, we do have a few hooks there, left versus right side. Moving over, I did mention, so we've got power folding seats. So power folding for the third row, we can either fold down one side or the other independently, or we can fold them both down together. But single button press opens it up really nicely. As you can see there, quite a little bit of space, which is fantastic. And then from there, we could power fold the middle row, but it is going to be a manual backup. So if we go just the one seat, down it goes. But you can see there, when we have that third row, the second row folded down, it just gives us even more space. But like I said, whether you go for the bench seat versus just the, the dual captain's chairs is gonna depend on how many seats you need inside of it, but we have a boatload of storage space. Now, if you need a little bit of extra space in the vehicle, you can't get the Timberline version of the vehicle because it's only available, I was mentioning it, in the standard length. If you needed the max, you'd have to look at, you could get the limited, and you might even look at some of the other packages that are available, like the Platinum Max as an option. So it's gonna depend on what you need out of the vehicle. One cool thing, as we get into some of those other vehicles, like the Platinum Max, we'd have massage chair seats and a few other nice things that you won't find inside of the Timberline. But the Timberline also has some other things you're not going to find at the Platinum Max. So it's going to depend on what you need out of the vehicle and what you find important in your ride. But I mean, like I said, like good styling overall, good features in the back here. Dimensions, so we've got a lot of storage along the sides. Nice storage pocket there. We've got a 12 volt power point back here. And then we've got this tray that's going to show us our jack stand as well as our white spigot. So if we ever need to fill up using a jerry can. Moving down, we also do have a cargo net on top of that. Now the spare tire for this thing is actually located just underneath the vehicle. So you could see it right there. So if we ever need to change the tire out, we could technically do it ourselves. But one of the cool things about being a Ford owner is that you also do have Ford roadside assistance that's going to cover you for the base of the powertrain of the vehicle. So we're five year, 100,000 kilometers in Canada that you're gonna have for your roadside assistance. It kind of works like CAA or AAA down in the States where if your vehicle breaks down, they could tow you to the nearest Ford dealership, help you change a tire, whatever the case would be. The difference though, is that this is strictly tied to your vehicle. So if you have another vehicle that's not a form, well, that's not this vehicle, you wouldn't be able to call it in order to get help with towing and things like that either way. It's strictly going to be for this vehicle. Still is nice that it's available though as an option. But I said feature, space, styling wise. Feature wise, this is nice. I love the thermoplastic rubber trays. We could go for the factory option. There is also the option of going through something like WeatherTech. So you'd have just different things that you could get. It's just gonna matter of, it's a matter of personal preference. What do you like the look of? On the outside here, we could also open and close. We can adjust the height to different levels. So if this is a little bit too high for your garage, we could set it at a different level if we want to. And we can just easily close down from there afterwards. And down it goes. But I said, really nice look overall, good features functionality wise. I still can't get over those beefy tires. All those things look nice. Like I said, just regular body style inside of this one. So we don't have the extended length available there as an option inside of this thing, but it is really nice. And like even looking at some basics of the key fob itself, 
So typical what we're going to see inside of the expedition lineup. So we've got our unlocking our lock button, remote start, trunk release, horn or panic alarm, and then our emergency access key. So if we need to lo lock the center console, we need to get in because the batteries died, whatever the case may be, we'd have that available as an option. Right. So one thing that I've noticed about this ride is how quiet it is. And that's one of the cool things about the Timberline version of the Expedition specifically, is that we will have a quieter ride than what we're gonna find inside of some of the other trims of the vehicle. So this one has like an active noise cancellation in it. The best way for me to describe it would be like very similar to what you're gonna find inside of like the Lincoln lineup of vehicles. So like Ford Lincoln, but Lincoln specifically, like the interior is very quiet and that's exactly how I feel about this right now. It is just, it's super, super quiet. It's a super quiet ride, which I love. Love it. Bump test. <laughs> it literally felt like I was going over nothing right there. It's so good, so good. This is really, really nice though. I still can't get over how quiet this ride is. This is really nice. Huh. I love it. All the technology, like I've got ventilated seats going right now on top of that. So it's, it's a quiet ride, it's a comfortable ride, and it's a cool ride because we've got leather seats inside of this thing, but they're ventilated, so it just makes it like that much better. It's really nice. Uh, well, oh, is this guy going to run the red too? Yeah, why not? Why do I have to stop at an amber light? The lights are not for me. They're optional. So ridiculous. But no, this is a nice ride. So we've actually got construction going on next to us. I want you to listen to something for a second. Okay, so no audio cleanup at all. This is just going to be like base naked audio. Versus. So you still have that little bit of a hum, but outside of that, like there's. So you can hear the road noise. You can hear people driving by with the window down. The second I put the window up. Gone. The on, literally the only noise I hear right now is just the air conditioning and then like the little bit of buzzing because of the construction behind us here. That is really cool. I love the noise cancellation inside of this thing. It is really, really nice. Nice and simple, but at the same time, this truck is incredible. Uh, that was a quick look at the Timberline version of the Expedition. What did you think? Nice ride. I did mention I love all the small highlights that you're gonna see inside of this vehicle. But if you have any questions, drop down in the comment section below and let me know. I'm more than willing to talk you through any issues that you might be having. But if you enjoyed this one, give it a thumbs up, share it with your social networks. And until I see you next time, Take care.